Good morning. morning. Welcome to Ascension and Holy Trinity Episcopal Church, where all are welcome because all belong. I invite us to pray this moment of centering prayer together. Lord Jesus Christ, make this a temple of your presence and a house of prayer. Be always near us when we seek you in this place. Draw us to you when we come alone and when we come with others to find comfort and wisdom, to be supported and strengthened, to rejoice and give thanks. May it be here, Lord Christ, that we are made one with you and with one another, so that our lives are sustained and sanctified for your service. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, and God, all one, Lord one faith, one baptism. And one God, and God, all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may please be seated for readings from Holy Scripture. Joshua, chapter 24, beginning at the first verse. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Let us pray Psalm 34 responsively by whole verse. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. Our second lesson for this morning is a reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Chapter 6, beginning at the 10th verse. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, 
so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert, and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe 
and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I ask, Lord Christ, that we may pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, may we keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. I ask that you also pray for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I and pray that we may declare it boldly, as we must speak. Amen. Teddy is excited for his big day. I I know that many of us are weary with worry. Not over the baptism, but maybe. I know that many of us today in society are weary with worry of all sorts. I see you in your worry. Me too. I see you and I hear you, and I care for you genuinely wherever you are in your worries and your concerns today. There's a lot of stress. The pandemic is still present tense. Haiti has had another catastrophic natural disaster. I just learned this morning that Hurricane Henry is coming up the coast. For many of us, things aren't the way we want them to be, right? If we'll be honest with ourselves, things just aren't the way we want them to be. And that's, there's much happening on the outside that we all know about, those sorts of things like the pandemic and hurricanes and earthquakes. That's serious enough, and we can see those things. But beyond the outsides that we see on each other, there's also our insides. There are the personal things that we keep private, that as you come through and you see me in the receiving line or see one another at the coffee hour afterwards, you're probably not sharing aloud. Personal things, things we'd rather others not know about. Maybe you or loved ones had a life-altering diagnosis. The the job transition that you're uncertain of and how that's going to affect your family. Maybe there's a relationship in jeopardy. Maybe you have concerns, well, let's say, if if we have parents, you have concerns for your children always? I do, yes. You have concerns for your children no matter how happy they may be, or maybe for you, your grandchildren, etc. We might be worried about the legacy that we leave to our families. What is it that people are going to remember about us? our faith community. So many struggles we have today. What I want to invite us and encourage us to do today is to take a deep breath and to be kind to ourselves. Be kind to one another in this. Be kind to your families. Be kind to your faith friends. Even those people who who you don't see eye to eye with, try your best to be kind and gentle with them and with yourselves. For every single one of us is processing something And even harder is when we aren't aware or acknowledging our interior struggles. We have stuff going on, but uh, I've been so obtuse in the past that I haven't even known what I was anxious about. Allow the Spirit, allow the gift of the Holy Spirit to overflow from God through you to cultivate generous hearts, forgiving minds, dare I say even maybe forgetful minds, of past hurts and the gift of patience with self and with God and with others. One could encourage us to practice this patience with John's bread of life discourse. We've been hearing about, thank you, we've been hearing about for roughly bread for about six weeks or so now, right? My apologies for any of you who are gluten intolerant because we've had a whole lot of carbs and bread for a while. We're finally finishing up our bread of life narrative in John today, and Jesus' disciples are clear with their frustration, aren't they? This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? 
John's community faced division. They faced frustration and great conflict, even persecution. They were having a hard time, a challenging time in the world and in the life of their own faith. Have you ever had a hard time in your faith? Maybe the pandemic is shifting whatever your concept of God may be. Maybe the pandemic is shifting your concept of what the roles of what the church's role is in witnessing to God's love today. Maybe you wonder and you hurt and you grieve over numbers and scores of people who have died from COVID. Or maybe from the numbers of folks who just don't want to receive the vaccination for whatever reason. Maybe you're wondering what your ministry in Christ's church and in the world could look like in light of all the hurt and in light of all the heartache around us today. It's okay to sit with those pondering and with those sorts of soul-searching questions. Those are really good questions. It doesn't make you unfaithful. It doesn't make you a bad Christian. It makes you human. It makes us. It makes me, too, human. You and we are doing deep spiritual work just by living and having our eyes and our hearts open today as we wonder and as we process. And this work isn't always comfortable work. This work doesn't always end with a I like to say a neat and tidy bow on my sermon. Sometimes I have those and sometimes I don't. Or maybe for the for the musician Sarah with a a wonderful major chord where we're all uplifted and can't wait to go forth. Sometimes our life homilies end with awkward and challenging questions. Sometimes we get to lean into the minor chords of life. This morning Jesus comes to us and he reminds his disciples and he reminds us that it's the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Words that I have spoken are spirit and life. We're told that that there were those present who didn't believe, including the one who would betray Jesus. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Things are frustrating. You don't exactly get what's going on in life. Do you wish to go away? With Simon Peter affirming his faith in Jesus, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. I I really appreciate Peter's words here. We have come to believe. Jesus' disciples have been with him quite a while at this point in John's Gospel and in the other Gospels. They have seen Jesus do some pretty outstanding things, heard parables, they've heard teachings, they've been with Jesus in his highest highs and some lows. Throughout their time with Jesus, they have come to believe. They are coming to believe. The Holy Spirit gives us life, true and abundant life, regardless of how deserving or undeserving we feel we are. We have been given this precious gift of living through the Spirit of Christ. And our belief in God is indeed a process. Our belief and our acting on our beliefs, our speaking and teaching and being present to one another in our beliefs. And Jesus, the living Son of God, is a perpetual process we get to tend to. Teddy will be baptized in a few minutes, I promise. Just a couple more minutes. And begin this process of coming to believe. There will be moments of shining clarity for him of God's loving presence in his life. And there are going to undoubtedly be times of challenge for his faith too. That's part of the life we know. His family, his church family, all of us, all will get to be present in that holy process for Teddy. Yes, the Holy Spirit gives life the truest and the most amazing life that we can fathom, and she gives this life as pure, unadulterated gift to us. But it can be easy to forget that even though we've received this awesome gift, that we get to work with the gift. We really need to work with the gift. Many years ago now, my father-in-law gave me a fly fishing rod. Actually, he got two fly fishing rods. I think he wanted to learn as well. But he he got these fly fishing rods, and in order to use that gift, we had to work with the fly fishing rods. Neither one of us had ever held a fly fishing rod. The other part of that great gift to me was a day on the Greenbrier River with a fishing guide, so I could learn how to use a fly fishing rod. On the river for the first time with a fly rod and with this thin fishing line called tippet and leaders and on and on, it can be quite frustrating especially when you get your flies stuck in overhead branches or the tippet snaps or a fish strikes and guilty, you miss it. In our spiritual lives, we can get frustrated, we can get impatient, uncertain, exhausted. 
Sometimes we're lucky to remember that God is there. We're reminded of that by our presence with one another. There are other times, though, where, where we forget that God is here with us. Sometimes we may look for God elsewhere. We may seek other things to bring us life, a whole cadre of other things that, that we feel like might give us life, rather than looking to the one who gives us eternal life. We may feel the need to walk away on our, on our own for a while. The world is crazy. The church is crazy. I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm on my own. But coming to believe is a process whereby we recognize and we ask God to be part of our lives. We ask for Christ's presence, and we go to work on our spiritual selves. It's an exciting process. With our baptism into the household of God, we've been given this lovely fly fishing rod, but still we have work to do. We've got to get out on that river with a guide, and we have to, to work and to learn and to make mistakes. We get to study scripture. We get to turn to community of faith and, and to participate in the life of faith in the church community and outside the church community. We get to pray together and on our own. We get to read and to discuss spiritual practices, to learn through classes and all sorts of personal spiritual experiences. And when we come to believe, we recognize that Jesus is the one we turn to today. And we recognize that Jesus is enough. We know that life will be full of joy. It'll be full of challenges and hardships and confusing times, too. We know that just as Peter and the others have walked, and as lives of saints continue walking with Jesus, that we, too, continue our walk with God. That we, too, may join with others on this path of coming to believe. Amen? Amen. And now... The candidate for holy baptism will be presented with all the goodies he'd like, if that's... Alright, so we are at page five in our bulletins. You all ready? All right. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Teddy Stephen to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian life and faith? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan? all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Congregation, will you please stand with us? This question is directed to you. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this child in his life in Christ? We will. Let us then join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? In Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born in the Virgin Mary. He suffered and was conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whatever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. 
Will you seek and serve Christ and all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for this child who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Send him into the world and witness to your love. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the gift of baptism from John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with, with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing him in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. I think Teddy is ready to be baptized. <laughs> Dad, do you want to come over here? You're doing great. I'm going to let you continue to hold him, all right? Teddy, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teddy, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain Teddy, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Receive this candle on behalf of Teddy that all may remember God's eternal light. Amen. Now let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Amen.
now the peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome. I'm delighted to see all of you with us today here in person and out on the interwebs. Glad you are with us. Congratulations to Daddy and to Lindsay and to Alex. We are delighted to have you with us as the newest member and follower of Jesus Christ. Do we have birthdays or anniversaries we would like blessed today? Okay. All right. There are a few announcements I want to make sure you know about. The first that Teddy wants you to know about, we're going to have a coffee hour in his honor in the air-conditioned parish hall right after this service. So we have ushers in the back who can show you the way, but the parish hall is the next building over. We would love to have you for some goodies to celebrate with Teddy. I know. And then at 2 o'clock today, we're going to have a classical piano recital by the Dr. Kelly Hale. Uh, Kelly served with Ascension and Holy Trinity as our director of music for many years. Uh, and Kelly is playing an hour-long recital up here on the piano. Uh, everyone's welcome to join and, and hear his beautiful music making. He's an extraordinary pianist. And then again, there will be another reception in the air-conditioned parish hall after that. So you can eat plenty here today at the church. Our minister of music, Sarah Toby, is doing a fantastic job. Please look closely here in the bulletin. Chancel Choir, you begin back up September the 9th. But not only Chancel Choir, New Youth and Children Chorus. Um, kids ages 8 to 17, if you would like from 7 to 8, you may participate and are encouraged to come out. The rehearsals are going to be upstairs here. Uh, quite frankly, it's easier to get to, and um, we are looking forward to having children, youth, adults, uh, the, as well as new A&HT singers. This whole piece here is about just because you joined the chancel choir this year, that doesn't mean that you sing in the chancel choir for 50 years and from September through May and like we have busy, extraordinarily crazy lives today. I know I do. Um, and so you may want to come, and you, you really love the Advent hymns. That's what people always say to you. We love Advent hymns, right? I'm sure. We love Advent hymns. So you want to sing for the season of Advent? That's okay today. We understand, Sarah especially understands that life is crazy. If we can get you for the season of Advent, that'd be really funny if those were your favorite hymns. But if we can get you for the season of Advent, great. You're welcome to come. So there are lots of ways you can connect with music ministries here at Ascension and Holy Trinity. And I encourage you, after the service, say hey to Sarah. She's extremely approachable, um, and she's open to ideas as well. So um, the, that's all in there for your reading. Backpack Blessing is going to be next Sunday, August the 29th at 8.30 and 10 o'clock worship services. Uh, Sandy Rempe is our preschool director. She'll be here to help uh, distribute the crosses. So I encourage you to come out for that service. We're also having an Ascension Holy Trinity Ministry Fair that same Sunday. Where are we, what else do we do? We're going to eat. We're going to eat again. So we eat great here in the Episcopal Church. But it's going to take place hopefully on the patio. We call it the gathering space, the brick patio on Worthington Avenue. We're going to have games for youth. We're going to have hot dogs and lunch and goodies to eat and drink. Uh, and we're going to learn about all of our outreach ministries, our worship ministries, and various other things. So I'm, my note for myself all week long is, Eric, keep sermon short. So I want to make sure that after that service, you stick around and we enjoy our time together on the gathering place. The other thing that we need is um, we need Sunday school teachers because I've emailed and polled all the parents. They want Sunday school again for our youth, which is fantastic. September the 12th, that's going to begin. Um, if you would like to be a Sunday school teacher, you can contact me um, or you can contact my wife, Rosemary. It, either way, the message will get back and forth, I assure you. So uh, we are looking for Sunday school teachers, though, to make that happen. This Tuesday night from 7 to 8, I don't know about food, but Jim Getchy is going to be with us from 7 to 8 p.m. in the parish hall to again teach us about inclusion and diversity. Those have been very well received. Um, and I believe that is about everything. Did, no, Invite Welcome Connect. Is there anything happening with Invite Welcome Connect? There she is.
Invite Welcome Connect. So Dixie Kahneman's been on Vestry and she's leading the charge with Invite Welcome Connect. That's for all things, not just for the worship space, but for everything we do as a faith community. Invite Welcome Connect, September the 8th. Um, that's also a simple supper night. We have plenty of space in this building, more than enough space for two meetings to take place. So I encourage you to come out. And Dixie, will there be food? Of course there will be food. All right, so come on out for that. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to celebrate the great Thanksgiving of our lives. Uh, I encourage you, all are welcome because all belong. That includes especially at the altar rail. Uh, for those who uh, do not like to do steps, I'm very happy to come down to the base here after I've done the altar railing and offer you communion from the base steps. Now ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and always come into God's courts with praise and with thanksgiving. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray the post-communion prayer and dedication of our lives together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord.